Hello chess fans, this is Chess to Impress with another impressive position from the history of the game. Today I'm going to tell you about the windmill, or as the Germans say, the Zickmühle, which is more or less the official term for the phenomenon in chess that I'm going to talk to you about. What is a windmill in chess? Well, let me take you back to 1925, where Carlos Torre played Emmanuel Lasker, the reigning world champion. Lasker got a bit distracted during the game because he got a telegram from his wife saying that the contract had finally been signed for his theatrical play to be performed. And I got this information from the book Chess Couriers curiosities from Tim Crabbe. So he wasn't fully concentrated during this, during this game and actually it was his most famous loss as it, turned out to, as it turned out to be. But let's go and see the windmill in action. What is the windmill? This is the position. White is better. White is Torre, so the world champion already was under a bit of pressure. His queen is attacked and he should have taken here on d4 and the game goes on even though white is better he has a nice attack as you can see queen rook and bishop attacking the black king but he made a mistake he made a blunder lasker did he played queen b5 and the refutation of that move is the very nice move bishop f6 the queen on b5 is under attack, but the queen on h5 as well, and Lasker had no option. He took the queen on h5, but he probably saw what was coming. And there is a rook takes g7 check. King h8 is the only legal move, and now we see the windmill in action. Rook takes f7 check, king g8 is the only legal move. And the rook goes back with the same position but without the pawn on f7. King h8, rook takes b7, check. The king can only go back, the rook goes back, and we have the same position but now without the bishop on b7. So with this combination of two moves, white has three moves. King h8, Rook g5, picking up the queen. And after rook takes e5, h5, the windmill is over. But white has won so much material, he's now a piece up for the queen that he originally let be on prize on h5. He has won that queen back, but also a bishop and a pawn in the process. And Torre went on to win this game. I'm going to show you a few other examples of this windmill phenomenon. Aaron Nimzowicz was inspired by this game and in his famous book Mind System he gives the following position which also has a windmill aspect to it. White to play and win. Well there's a very famous mating pattern with queen and bishop in this position. What we'd like to do is play bishop h7 check and then king h8, bishop g6, king g8, queen h7 check, king f8 and then checkmate on f7. A very common mating idea. In this case that is not the solution of course because the bishop on d5 is protecting the f7 square. But with a little windmill we can deflect the bishop. I'll show you how it works. Bishop h7 check is indeed the first move. King h8 only move. But now the little windmill bishop goes to c2. And why does it go to c2? We see that in a minute. King g8 is the only legal move. And now rook g2 check. And the only way to, the only legal move here is bishop takes g2. We have deflected the bishop, and that's why the bishop, the white bishop, had to go to c2.
but if that because if that bishop had not been on c2 now then black could have taken with his rook on g2 that's why the bishop had to be in the way and now that the bishop is deflected the black bishop that is we can make our checkmating pattern which now works bishop a7 check and the same moves as before but now queen f7 is checkmate because the bishop has been deflected a very nice composition this is a study from bondarenko from 1961 and this shows the ultimate extreme of the windmill let me quickly show you the solution it's white to play and win the only move that wins is a rook sacrifice to set up the windmill rook h8 check king takes and the other rook comes to c8 king h7 only move and now the windmill comes in operation bishop g8 king has to go back and now the bishop has three moves galore king h7 and the rook and the bishop goes back and every time i just click through the moves as you can see every time the bishop has to go back to g8 to reload the windmill and then goes and takes another piece and there is a nice finish to this because after bishop takes a two check king h7 we reload one more time king h8 and bishop b3 king h7 and bishop takes c2 check and the bishop forks king and queen and after queen takes c2 rook takes c2 white has an easily winning position as tim Crabbe says in his book the tragic comical aspect of the windmill is exploited to an extreme in this study quite funny the last windmill position i want to show you is a composition from del rio from the year 1750 many years ago why to play and win queen e5 check is the first move and now the king cannot go to c8 because of queen c7 checkmate so king a8 has to be played and white sets up the windmill knight c7 king b8 only move and now knight takes e8 is necessary one defender has to be taken away and king c8 queen c7 is again checkmate so king a8 knight c7 back and we have the same position but without the rook on e8 king b8 and now the smothered mate motif so this composition is a combination of the windmill with the smothered mate the smothered mate that we all know and if you don't know it then i'm jealous of you because this is the first time you'll see it and if i remember the first time i saw the smothered mate and i thought it was beautiful it goes as follows knight a6 check which is double check and again we cannot go to c8 because of queen c7 checkmate and after king a8 the very surprising move queen b8 and the only move is rook takes b8 and the lone knight gives checkmate smothered mate on c7 so we get a little windmill and a smothered mate at the end which is a nice video which is a nice position to finish this video with hope you enjoyed this if you did please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when i post my next video this is chess to impress thank you for watching